Now, Boris Johnson will attempt to save his Brexit plan this week after France's Emmanuel Macron warned the EU will decide if an agreement is possible in a few days' time. Uh, the PM told Monsieur Macron Brussels shouldn't think Britain could extend its membership of the bloc beyond the end of the month. What then are we expecting over the next few days? We're joined by the senior editor at Navarra Media, Eleanor Penny, and reporter at Guido Fawkes, Tom Harwood. They're both in our Westminster studio, having, I imagine, uh, got through some of the Extinction Rebellion uh, <laughs> congestion down there. Eleanor, welcome uh, to you. Let's start with you, if we may. Um, ten days until this EU summit. Uh, he's bashing the phones, the Prime Minister. Um, Emmanuel Macron says, decision by the end of the week. What price to deal? Well... Boris Johnson has repeatedly um, said that no delay is, is on the table for him, despite the fact that, you know, he is legally bound by the Ben Act, right? So what this is, is a challenge on behalf of the EU leadership, the EU27, to say, you know, put your real politique where your mouth is, essentially, and bring a workable deal to the table, which means that that delay won't be necessary. And that's exactly what he hasn't done. The concessions over Ireland, so that they're being uh, framed at the moment, are really just concessions to the hardliners in the DUP and his own party. And they just double down on a problem that it, the EU has repeatedly said is a non-starter, which is a hard border in Ireland. Uh, Tom, the government's negotiator, the Prime Minister's negotiator, uh, David Frost, is in Brussels today. Stephen Barclay, uh, Secretary of State for Exit in the European Union, he's in uh, The Hague. He'll move on from there. Is this going through the motions? Or, I mean, are they really actually hoping to achieve something substantive? No, I think what we've seen really over the last few weeks is just how keen this government is to achieve a deal, just how much good faith there has been on the UK side in these negotiations, how many practical proposals have been proposed by the UK side and actually what bad faith the EU has acted in. It's becoming increasingly clear that the EU is not willing to accept anything that the UK says other than sort of going back to that uh, original agreement that was almost subservient to the European Union, whereby the UK was would have to follow EU rules and regulations and be trapped within the EU's customs union. It seems the EU will not accept any agreement that is not that level of subservience. And so it's clear that Remain is acting within the United Kingdom, through the courts, through Parliament, trying to take no deal off the table, is actually leading towards a situation whereby we're going to have to, uh, if, if, if no deal is taken off the table, uh, and, and it remains to be seen if that's happening or not, but it, if that happens, then, then we're just going to keep extending and extending. That's good for the EU. They'll continue to take a billion pounds a month off us, and Remainers will be able to try and cause this chaos that they're profiting from politically. It's very bad faith acting from both the EU and Remainers in Parliament, and the government's trying to get a deal, but they're being frustrated in that process. I wonder if Tom's right uh, and the, the, the British government's acting in good faith and Brussels isn't, uh, then the danger is, in terms of the optics of the thing, it looks terribly antagonistic, it looks as if uh, Brussels is, is foot-dragging and doesn't actually want to deal, but it's stringing the UK along, and, and that looks bad, if true. I mean, Brussels absolutely wants a deal. That's been clear from the get-go, right? Um, and we really need to uh, be clear on the fact that this was always going to be the consequence of Boris Johnson's basically single negotiating strategy, which is to threaten the EU with no deal, which is kind of internally contradictory because he needs to both convince, uh, convince us that no deal is so terrible that the EU would never allow it, and also that no deal is kind of fine and we're totally prepared for it. And that kind of incoherence is, is at the heart of all of his negotiating strategies. And I think it's kind of extraordinary to talk about things like protecting the British economy, protecting workers' rights, protecting uh, food sta standards and consumer rights, protecting the peace deal in no Northern Ireland. These are real, tangible issues. They're not dreamed up by bureaucratic Remainers. They're about people's lives. And it says volumes about this administration that they would treat those real issues as so much hot air and so much detritus in the way of their path to glory. Uh, Tom, you mentioned... Uh, sorry, go on. You mentioned the courts, Tom. Uh, reports over the weekend suggesting that uh, the Supreme Court could be the destination for Boris Johnson if it comes uh, to looking potentially uh, for remedies. Uh, Court of Sessions, rather, looking at that in Edinburgh, uh, looking at how they would enforce the Ben Act if it looked like the government was reluctant to, to follow it through. The courts are active. 
Yeah, it's actually quite interesting to see how the only way that R Remainers feel they can advance in politics at the moment is through anything that doesn't involve the electorate. They don't want an election. They don't want to face the people. So they have to resort to uh, politicians moving parties and going back on manifesto commitments in Parliament and through courts trying to pursue judicial activism in the legal sphere, which is something that our country really is not used to. We don't tend to try and solve big political questions through the judiciary. It's supposed to be impartial and non-politicised. And I worry, I really worry, that we're moving towards a sort of US-style Supreme Court that does not solve anything. When you try and solve political issues in the judiciary, you end up with a massively antagonised electorate. You look at the issue of abortion in, in this country and in America. In America, it was tried to be solved through the courts, and about half the country loathed that. There was no political solution. In this country, we solved it politically, and it's become a less hot button hot button issue. So I think if you try and pursue anything through uh, through the courts and, and you try and um, solve political issues this way, you actually cause more antagonism and, and less solution. And I really worry that Remainers trying to throw money at lawyers and try and frustrate uh, democratic votes through the legal system is really undermining of that system that they purport to uphold. Okay, I was hoping to get on to Jeremy Corbyn's meeting of opposition leaders, but we're out of time, I'm afraid. Tom Harwood uh, and Eleanor Penny, thanks both very much.